To start off, we have Sonia Risley. Sonia Risley has been a principal of both elementary and middle school in Poway Unified School District in San Diego County for 22 years and has also taught grades K through 12. Currently, Sonia is the principal of Design 39 Campus, an innovative K through 8 school, the first of its kind in the district that opened in August of 2014. Sonia has been extensively trained in adaptive school strategies and a certified extreme leadership facilitator. Based on Steve Farber's book, Radical Leap Re-Energize, she has provided LEAP, love, energy, audacity, proof, training for school districts in San Diego area, and has adapted the extreme leadership day-long training to enable school and district leaders to provide LEAP to teachers and leaders. According to Farber, through LEAP, schools have been able to develop a culture of doing, what you love in service of those who love what you do. Sonia is recently named as one of the National School Board's Association Technology Leadership Network 20 to Watch honorees for 2014. This list of distinctive educated leaders from across the country are being recognized for their ability to inspire colleagues to explore and embrace innovative technology solutions that contribute to high quality instruction and support more personalized learning experiences for students. Sonia, Sonia's energy, enthusiasm, vision, and drive to make schools better for children are contagious. Today she will be talking about developing a culture within a school community that enables everyone to collaborate, break down teacher isolation, and motivate everyone to develop new learning experiences that are relevant for today's students. Help me welcome Sonia Risley. Got to get my dinosaur log laid out here. <laughs> All right. So I think the biggest challenge we have in education is our fear of failure. There are people around us, and as you heard a few minutes ago, for 10 years we had people saying, here's how we're going to be measured. And we weren't allowed to try different things outside the factory model. So it might be people right inside this room, right inside the district saying, we can't change and we have to change. We have people that are trying some things. We just saw great examples of that. But there could be somebody right next to you saying, we probably shouldn't change because we might fail. It might be right inside of you. So I'd like to take you through a little bit of fear of failure. And maybe if we weren't afraid to take risks, we could do something great. So what would you do if you weren't afraid? What country would you travel through to? What ocean would you sail across? What mountain would you climb? What wild thing would you do in your classroom if you weren't afraid? So I think about WD-40. How many of you have heard of WD-40? Yeah, <laughs> household product. How many of you know what WD-40 stands for? I shall tell you then, there's only a few of you. It means water displacement, 40th formula. The people at that company at that time were trying to find a lubricant that would stop squeaks. They tried and failed and learned 39 times before they made WD-40. So what would happen if we could develop cultures in our schools like they have at WD-40? They continue to do failures and successes today, and they're a really successful company now. So what if we could set aside our fear of failure? What crazy innovations could we have in our schools? What if we could develop our confidence to fail and fail together and then learn from that and move on? If we could work together, we can build that confidence together. Right now, we still tend to work in isolation, either in our own schools or in our own classrooms. We shut the door and we try something, and if it works, we tell people. If it doesn't, we're very shy about it. We're really embarrassed. But what if we could work together to build wildly innovative ideas? So we need to stop comparing test scores, get rid of all of that last decade, because we compare and we want to be the better one right here in our schools, right here within our district, across the nation and across the world. We need to stop comparing and competing and work together. So if we can develop strong relationships and a trusting culture in our schools and our school districts, then we can make things happen. 
If we can truly collaborate and learn to listen to understand instead of learning or listening to get ready to argue with them and tell them their idea isn't good, then we have a chance to do something great. We need to also build partnerships with our parents, with our community, and with companies. We don't have all the answers anymore. The world has changed so rapidly, and there are a lot of people that have a lot of great answers. Companies have full-blown education departments to teach their employees about 21st century skills. Why not learn from all of their research that they've done, work together with them? At Design 39, we have a wonderful relationship with Intuit. You know, the folks that have developed TurboTax and QuickBooks and those types of things. There's one about six miles from our school. They have a program at Intuit called Design for Delight Facilitators, and they've trained hundreds of facilitators throughout their co corporation, and they train their people in design thinking. And so they offered, we happen to have a few parents at our school from Intuit, so they offered to bring their Design for Delight facilitators to our school to work with our fourth, fifth, sixth graders. And our children have learned to do such great design thinking. They've become much more empathetic. And actually, we're in st still in school this week. It's kind of interesting to be away on the last week of school. But our kiddos are there with the Intuit designers. And they are working on our Minds in Motion program. That's our form of p physical education. And they don't like all the aspects of it, so they are changing it. And next year, we will implement what they come up with. So Intuit is helping our children learn and helping our children know that they can change the world. Another thing that we can do in building this collaborative culture and learning to facilitate and learning to listen to understand takes a lot of work. And I know some of you are aware of adaptive schools. I am, as you heard, I'm a trainer of adaptive school strategies. So I thought this is one of the biggest things that I can do for our entire staff. All of us have been trained, custodians, office, every teacher, every instructional assistant. And the biggest thing on adaptive schools is that you learn to become an effective team member and really work together and collaborate and facilitate. So what we've been able to do is learn to trust each other. And we're working on that still. We've only been together 10 months now. And just uh, the last few weeks, we worked together through some really tense decisions. We were trying to decide how are we going to group students next year for uh, them to maximize their growth. And we spent, oh gosh, about eight meetings working together. And through our adaptive school strategies, we could have every voice heard. And then we made a, a final conclusion just last Thursday. Everybody finally declared, we know what we're doing next year for our student groupings. And everyone declared what they're going to, where they're going to be teaching. We could not have done that without being able to collaborate and listen to each other. We also have, through learning to trust each other, we also have learned to trust our students. As you were hearing, of the crazy things kids can do when we unleash their potential, when we let them go, they can do anything. We do still follow Common Core and Next Gen Science standards, but through that we give our children choices and we let them then build their meaning. So, for instance, if we do the Titanic, and we had some sixth grade students working on that, they got to choose. They learned a little bit of non, a lot of bit, of nonfiction writing skills, and then also they learned about um, the social studies and the social classes that were on the boat. What they got a choice of doing is deciding, were they going to write through the perspective of a first class passenger, or from a crew member, or from steerage class? And it's amazing when you do one little thing, you give them a choice, how much they will do because they own it. So if we can, uh, think about how traditional work schools work, where they have kids sit in rows, the factory model, learn to be how to get the A, answer the right answers, and become compliant. We have to stop that because that is just giving us that, just that compliance. And Sir Ken Robinson talks about how schools kill creativity. That's how we do it. So we need to stop doing that. And it does take a lot of time and a lot of effort, but it's worth it. So at Design 39, in the afternoon, a lot of you have, I don't know how many, how many of you have been to Design 39? A lot of you have saw, so you know our deep dives and our explorations in the afternoon. 
This is Camden, and Camden's mom did give me permission to bring him to Denver with me. So Camden, I went through his class, and he was so excited to tell me all about making a kite and how when he was prototyping, and then he'd take it outside, and it would crash straight into the ground. So Camden then went in and found an app to teach him how to make a kite. And he then started realizing what the angles needed to be like. And it was telling him how many degrees were in each of the angles. He started talking about ratio and proportion to me. And then he said, and this is what I built. Come on, do you want to see me fly it? And that's the picture I took. There's engagement, second grade. And then we have Beckett. Beckett, when he was um, last year in preschool, he hated school. He had to go and sit on the same spot on the rug, same chair, write on the lines and learn to write his letters in painstaking, horrible penmanship that he had. And then he had the chance to come to us. He told his mom he never wanted to go to school again if that's how school was. And when we opened in August, Beckett came to us. By the way, Beckett's a kindergartner. This is one of those great kindergarten st stories. And so now I'd like you to hear from Beckett. Oops. Back, back up. Back up another. And then, yeah. Then, there you go. There you go. Okay. What is pi? The circumference divided by the diameter. And can you um, tell us what number that would be? 3.14. Okay. And how many numbers are in pi? At least 10 trillion that computers have known. What do you love about this? Because it includes math. It does, and you love math, right? And there is a bunch of information here. That sounds like a great book. You're pretty amazing. <laughs> So that's Beckett. He loves school. He loves math. He wants to be a mathematician. So if we learn to let go of control and trust our students, things like this can happen. Things like you heard earlier, things go crazy. If we trust our students and trust ourselves to let go of that control. So what I'd like to do now then is, because I am talking a lot slower than I thought, I'll wrap up very quickly. If we let go of control, we can do amazing things. I heard or I read a quote on Twitter um, by Heather Plett in We Need to Learn to Listen to Each Other and Value Each Other. And she said, in far too many of our conversations, we feel the need to fix people, critique them or give them good advice, which makes that person feel like they're flawed or not as smart as you. In truth, the gift of being listened to is often more healing than any advice you could give. So rather than trying to control people, my message to you is let go of that control. Trust your principals who you've hired to be great principals. Trust your teachers. Trust your students to do great things. And I know that you have a lot of schools that are doing great things right here in Douglas County. And what's happening at Sedalia will be different than Sage Creek. You know what you need in each of your schools. You don't need somebody from the top telling you. Indeed, you have permission to do something great at, in your schools in Douglas County. So don't wait for that permission. Don't let that fear hold you back. Right here in this room, there's a lot of talent. There's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of love and there's a lot of experience and you guys working together working collaboratively learning to trust each other letting go of control and letting students learn at their own rate you guys can do things you can do great things throughout your district so look at failure in a different way look at it as a learning opportunity and let your students try don't be embarrassed to fail help each other up and work together and take a risk and create something great.